of Almighty Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad, peace be upon him, narrated, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tarim Soon. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make the channel a grand success. We are a family, a partner. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into validation in the world by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Okay, today I'm going to discuss my lecture number two on a fluid catalytic cracking FCC unit. Okay, so governing a pathway, delivering on commitment, differential performance, enabling profit optimization process, lecture number two. Before my lecture, I used to read a Quranic course. Kala Rabbi Shrahali Sadri wa Yassarli Amri wa Halala Okdatam Melisani Yafka Kali Allahumma Rabbi Sitting Ilma. Oh my Lord, open my chest and use my task for me and lose or not from my tongue that they may understand my saying. Allahumma Rabbi Sitting Ilma, O Allah, advance me in my knowledge and true understanding. Okay. Lecture number two Theoretical Descriptions of FCC Unit. In my earlier lecture, we have already discussed reactor CVLT. Okay. So now today we are going to discuss regenerator CVLTs and at a later stage process flow descriptions, major equipment purpose and functions, startup shadowed emergency procedures, troubleshooting, advanced process control strategies, conversion involvement aspect, safety recommendations, unit performance monitoring. Okay. So, key takeaway points from lecture number two. So, today, first, we will give highlights on air distributions, catalyst condition, coke combustions, combustions air rate, regeneration level, recirculation catalyst rate, dense office temperature, catalyst cooler, regeneration pressure, and torch oil. Okay. Operating variables, reactor and regenerator. The reactor and regenerator operates together as an integrated unit, but it is convenient to discuss the process variable in each part independently. It is impossible to make a process change in one section without affecting the other. Okay, the major variables are the reaction severity and regenerator severity. The effect of each variable on plant operation can be discussed relatively together with its relation to other process condition. Okay. We have already discussed the catalyst management system, catalyst oil ratio, charge rate, combined of free temperature, reactor pressures, reactor temperature, recycle rate, lift gas system, riser system, and stepping system rate. Okay. Okay. Regeneration severity. My first topic we are going to discuss today, air distribution here, then a catalyst condition, co-combustions, combustion air rate, catalyst cooler, dense of phase temperature, recirculation catalyst rate, regenerator level and regenerator pressure and torch oil. Okay, operating variables of regenerations. The function of the regenerator is to burn off the coke from the spent cutters or transferred off from the reactor. Heat generated from this combustion provides the heat necessary for the operation of the unit. Regenerator operation influence reactor performance as a partially regenerated catalyst does not provide adequate conversion and product distribution will be affected. More important is the effect that various in regenerators dense phase temperature have on the catalyst oil ratio. Remember, low dense phase temperature result in high catalyst circulation which increase both the conversion and coke yield, but may also limit the capacity of the unit. Okay, next is the air distribution. 
Okay, your distributions. The first instance of the originator. Even a distribution is an essential to a good originator operation. If more air is passing through one section of the bed than other, catalyst regenerations may not be complete. Uneven temperature profiles are a sign of poor distribution. This can be caused by a damaged distributor or operation at an air rate substantially lower than the design air rate required. Low air rates will result in a great pressure drop below design value which can cause distributor erosion problems. Air grade distributors are normally designed for a pressure drops from 0.035 to a 0 0.07 bar or a 0.5 to 1.0 psi. Okay, catalyst condition this is the second instance of a regenerator. Okay, first regenerator operation is not significantly affected by normal changes in a catalyst properties. However, a substantial loss of, of fines from the catalyst inventory will result in a poor fluidization in the regenerator and the carbon content of the regenerated catalyst will increase. For this reason, withdrawal of equilibrium catalyst from the regenerator should be done regularly so that there will not be shift of catalyst a particle size distribution toward a large size particles. Occasionally, catalyst becomes stinted by the exposure to high temperatures or as a result of sodium contaminations. Slitting occurs when the catalyst melts just sufficiently to close some pores. If these pores contain a coke, this coke cannot be regenerated since it is shielded from the oxygen. If catalyst is still gray in a color, after laboratory regeneration in the routine carbon determination, this color is probably due to coke trapped in stated pores of the catalyst. This indicates that the catalyst pore structure has been permanently damaged, resulting in its loss of activity. Okay, my next topic is coke combustion of the regeneration system. Okay, coke combustion. The third instance of regenerator. Coke is a mixture of carbon and hydrogen which when burned into regenerator can produce a carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and water. The carbon burning may be complete to a CO2 or it may only be partially to remain CO2, CO2 mixtures. So may in turn burn to carbon dioxide and achieve maximum combustion. In my first equation, complete combustion carbon plus O2 and it turn into carbon dioxide and heat. So you will get maximum heat. Partial combustion, it remain in carbon monoxide. And in the third, carbon monoxide burned with oxygen again and turn into carbon dioxide and heat. All of these reactions releases the heat. Complete combustion of carbon yield will produce 7,863 kilocalorie per kg of 4150 BTU of carbon while partial burning carbon monoxide remain and only 2200 kilo, kilo calorie per kg or 3096 BTU per pounds of the carbon. The carbon monoxide combustion releases roughly 72% of total energy available or pounds of the carbon. If the unit is operated for total combustion, the maximum amount of heat is released. Resulting in the highest catalyst temperature. Thus, in turn, will lower the catalyst circulation rate and the total coke production for a given energy requirement. The catalyst will be cleaner and more active, which offsets most of the potential conversion loss because of the lower catalyst circulation. The lower coke productions also means a higher liquid yield. The high efficiency regenerator is designed for a complete carbon monoxide combustion. The catalyst temperature during carbon monoxide combustion may be as high as it can remain 705 degrees Celsius to 730 degrees C. The unit has been designed for the extreme temperature by using the 
eight in eight stainless steels are typically at 304 hpr all internals the total combustion may be initiated by using a promoted catalyst or catalyst promoters to catalyze the conversion of carbon monoxide or in some cases by simply adding access air the promoter usually are noble metal in very small quantities one to two ppm on a catalyst preferably burns a carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide as soon as it is formed. okay next is the combustion air rate okay number four instance combustion air rate the air rate to the high efficiency regenerator should be adjusted to maintain one to two volume percent access oxygen in the flue gases if a sufficient amount of combustion air is not supplied to the regenerator to complete the co-combustion the regenerator will get behind in burning this occurs when a coke is burned off the catalyst at a slower rate than it being formed during the cracking reaction partially regenerated catalyst lacks activity so more coke is formed on the next passes through the riser and the catalyst losses even more activity the regenerator temperature declines steadily until the unit no longer function the operator should guard against the getting a behind in burning by first maintaining the normal regenerator temperature pattern number two periodically checking that the color of the regenerator catalyst is not increasing in the grayness indicating an accumulation of coke number three anticipating changes in the process conditions which increase a coke productions charge stock change decrease in combined feed temperature number four carefully controlling the access air level for one to two volume percent access oxygen in the flue gases okay next year if the regenerator is operated with an excessive quantity of air the regenerator efficiency will decrease and cool the regenerator okay the next instance of regeneration is catalyst cooler okay catalyst cooler the removal of heat from the regenerator via the cooler can be varied over a wide operating range depending on the feed stock quality and desired conversion rate an increase in the heat removal without changing any other variable will have the following facts number one increase the catalyst oil ratio number two increase the conversion rate decrease the regenerated catalyst temperature increase the coke make number five increase liquid product yield and last reduce the quantity of catalyst addition required to maintain a given activity level of the catalyst okay number six instance dense phase temperature the originated dense phase temperature is directly controlled by the catalyst cooler the originator temperature is a heat balancing mechanism of the regeneration process these changes in the process condition which tends to produce a more coke also cause an increase in regenerator temperature the increased temperature reduces the catalyst oil ratio which in turn reduces the coke productions and restore the balance this temperature increase in are usually compensated for by increasing heat removal in the catalyst cooler the process change will could cause an uh, increase in the regenerator of dense phase temperature number one an increase in charge specific gravity average boiling point or cordial's carbon level number two decrease in charge characterization factor uopk addition or increase in bottom recycle rate number four increase in combined feed temperature number fifth an increase in react temperature and last year an increase in reactor pressure pressure okay okay origination severity in instance number seven recirculation catalyst rate a condition known as after burning occurs when unburned carbon monoxide does not begin to burn to carbon dioxide until the flue gases reach the regenerator 
In this area, there is very little catalyst to absorb the heat. This causes extremely high temperature, which may seriously damage the cyclones or the flue gases line. In the high efficiency regenerator, the carbon burn should take place in the combustion riser to maximize the heat transfer to the regenerator catalyst in the regenerator damp space. If the combustion temperature is insufficient to burn all the carbon in the combustion riser, the burning will take place in the re regenerator. Decreasing the regenerator efficiency, an indication of this type of auto burning is observed when the regenerator dilute phase temperature are greater than the dense phase temperature. This problem can be corrected by recirculating a more hot catalyst from the regenerator which will increase the coke burning rate in the combustion riser. Okay, instance it regenerator level. The regenerator is the catalyst or surge vessel of the unit. This level will vary slightly with operating condition, but it is maintained by manually adjusting the rate of catalyst additions or withdrawal. Generally, a fresh catalyst is made up continually to maintain activity since the catalyst will deactivate it at the certain or minimum rate, regardless of charge rate and compositions. Usually, there will be a minimum or daily catalyst makeup rate from 1 to 2% of catalyst inventory. The makeup rate necessary to maintain a constant activity will tend to be less if the catalyst inventory is small. This makeup normally result in an increasing at catalyst level since this rate should be greater than any loss rate. This requires a periodic a batch wise withdrawal of the equilibrium catalyst when the regenerator level gets high. Operating with low regenerator level should be avoided due to decrease a unit stability, which could rise a low level will not provide the ability to absorb changes in the catalyst densities and circulations. A large regenerator catalyst inventory will absorb the effects of minor upsets in the operating conditions since the change in regenerator temperature and catalyst circulation rate will be smaller. Okay, instant 9, regeneration severity, regenerator pressure. An increase in regenerator pressure will improve the catalyst origination, though this variable is almost never used for this purpose. The effect of regenerator pressure on slide valve differential pressure, main air blower power consumption, catalyst increment, and cyclone efficiency is more important. Lowering the regenerator pressure will cause number one, increase spent catalyst slide valve differential pressures, decrease the regenerated catalyst or slide valve differential pressure. Number three, decrease the main air floor power consumption. Number four, slightly improve air distribution. And number fifth, increase a catalyst entrainment to the cyclones. Okay, next is a torture, is a loss instance of regeneration severity. Okay, torture, this is the last instance of regeneration severity. The torchal nozzles permits oil to be separated into the combustor during the startup as an aid in the heating of the catalyst inventory. Raw oil or circulating HCO is used since both have a IBP over 200 degree, 5 degree Celsius or 400 degree F, which eliminates the danger of the torch oil vaporizing before ignitions when it is used during the startup. Torchal should not be used during a normal operation because its excessive heat can snit the catalyst resulting in deactivation. When it is necessary to use a torch oil, care should be taken to make sure that the oil is properly atomized. A high concentration of the oil in this small area can result in localized area being hotter than the temperature indicated by the regenerated temperature. Never attempt to use a torch oil without catalyst recirculation and minimum combustion catalyst density of that is nearly about 70 kg per meter cube or 4.4 a pound per foot cube is required. Okay, next is conclusion. We have discussed air distributions, catastrophic conditions, 
coke combustions, combustion air rate, cutters cooler, dense phase temperature, recirculation cutters rate, regeneration level, regeneration pressure, and torture. My next topic will be quality and condition of the charge stock. First is the boiling point, carbon residue, characterization factor UPK, gravity, metal, nitrogen, oxygen. These are a few references. Thank you very much for your precious time. Together, I will win achievement. Please do not hesitate. Send me your feedback. Thank you very much and stay.